This video features the collection of dog saliva. How does dog saliva differ from human saliva? Today, we'll explore the secrets of dog saliva. First, I enlisted the help of my friend's beloved dog, Prince Buddy, to collect saliva. Prince Buddy is not only adorable, but also very smart. It was a bit challenging, but after getting Prince Buddy's approval, I tempted him with his favorite snack to collect the saliva. I asked him to wait, and gently collected the saliva onto a transparent plate. However, he wasn't too fond of this method. So, I placed a grain of rice on the plate to collect the saliva directly. And it worked perfectly. Thus, I successfully collected a good amount of saliva from Prince Buddy. I decided to collect his saliva after reading an article claiming that dog saliva contains no amylase. Test this, we explored the properties of amylase. Amylase is a digestive enzyme that breaks down starch, a complex carbohydrate in simpler sugars like maltose. To detect amylase in saliva, we mixed a starch-based substance with the saliva and observed whether any starch breakdown occurred. We used a specific reagent to detect whether starch has been broken down. This reagent changes color when it comes into contact with certain nutrients, allowing us to identify the presence of these nutrients. For instance, we used a blue biuret solution to detect proteins because it turns purple upon contact with proteins, and a brown iodine solution, which we used to detect starch, turns blue-purple when it contacts starch, as demonstrated here. For our amylase test, we used Benedict's reagent. Benedict's reagent changes color upon contact with sugars like maltose or glucose, making it ideal for testing for amylase. We first tested human saliva by mixing it with a starch-coated rice grain and adding Benedict's reagent. Initially, there was no change. Because Benedict's reagent reacts slowly with sugars, we heated it with an alcohol lamp to speed up the reaction. Upon heating, the blue reagent turned yellow, indicating that the starch had been broken down. For comparison, when we mixed rice grains with distilled water and Benedict's reagent, there was almost no color change, showing no reaction. Since the primary component of rice is starch, the reaction was minimal. However, with human saliva, the amylase broke down the starch into sugars, causing the Benedict's reagent to react. Interesting, wow. isn't it? Now, let's test the saliva from Prince Buddy. We mixed his saliva with rice grains, added Benedict's reagent, and heated it. Hmm, there seems to be no significant change. But upon closer inspection, there's a slight yellowish tint, more than when just the rice grains were present. This suggests that some starch was broken down, indicating the presence of amylase in dog saliva. However, the reaction isn't as strong as in humans, because the concentration and activity of amylase in dog saliva are much lower. This difference is linked to their eating habits. Unlike humans, who mix food thoroughly with saliva before swallowing, dogs tend to swallow food more quickly and digestion primarily occurs in the stomach and small intestine. So the amylase concentration and activity in their saliva are lower. Interestingly, unlike humans, who are omnivores, dogs descended from carnivores, and therefore have significantly less amylase in their saliva. Curious, isn't it? One last point. Many people are mistaken about dog hair allergies. Most symptoms attributed to dog hair are actually caused by components in dog saliva. Dog saliva contains numerous allergenic proteins. When saliva on their fur evaporates, it becomes airborne and triggers allergies. So it's more accurate to say people are allergic to dog saliva, not the hair. Interesting, isn't it? That concludes our video on dog saliva. If you enjoy our videos, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. This was Fishy Science, unraveling the mysteries of science.